Hello and welcome. My name is Anina Bossard and I'm the consultant for the markets USA and Canada at Switzerland Global Enterprise. SMEs in the medtech industry vertical here in Switzerland have a lot to offer. They are often niche specialists, for example, in syringes or specialist imaging equipment and market leaders in fields such as pacemakers or orthopedic implants. According to the Association Swiss Medtech, there are 1,400 Medtech companies here representing the highest concentration of Medtech enterprises in all of Europe. In a report that SGE published last year, we evaluated the positionings of Swiss Medtech companies in the global markets. And according to this report, especially medical equipment, that is surgical and diagnostic equipment, has a high global market potential worldwide as well as AI power, drug discovery, telemedicine, and bioinformatics. According to the latest numbers available, in the year 2019, there was a total of 17.9 billion Swiss francs of sales from Mete companies. This represents 2.6% of Switzerland's total GDP in that year. And two thirds of all Medtech sales were destined for exports and a sizable portion of it to North America. So both the US and Canada are extremely important export markets for Switzerland and the Medtech vertical. In 2019, 28% of all Medtech exports were destined for the US alone. The Canadian Medtech market is by default somewhat smaller than the US market, but still considered the ninth largest in the world and of course, continuing to grow. So what are steps that you as a Swiss medtech company can take to gain access to the North American market? What is the regulatory homework that you need to complete prior to entering the market? And how did your Swiss peers do it that already are operating successfully on the market? In the following chapters of this video, Swiss medtech SMEs will shed light on these questions directly. We are thrilled to share insights and inspiration from Früh Verpackungstechnik, Hightech MC, MPS Micro Precision Systems, Back Automation, Ipsomid, and the Zero. These Swiss companies charted their own way to the North American market, and there will surely be a lot of inspiration that you can gain from their interviews for your own path. And finally, because of that regulatory homework that I mentioned in the beginning, our regulatory expert Medide will cover this space for you. I am today also joined by my two colleagues from the Swiss Business Hubs in North America. First, Corinne Whitmer joins us from the Swiss Business Hub USA in San Francisco, and Sonia Müller joins us from the Swiss Business Hub Canada in Montreal. And to start this journey, you'll now see a trailer of the trade show MDNM West, which took place recently in Anaheim. SGE attends this show with a host of Swiss medtech companies every year with a Swiss pavilion, and now you get a first impression of what a trade show in North America looks like. Enjoy.
Hello, everybody. With us today, we have Leo von Struck, Head of Sales and Marketing at Hitech. Hitech is a state of the art microelectronic Swiss manufacturer specialized in development and production of high quality custom made product based on ultra thin, flexible, multi layer printed circuit solution addressing medical, space and aircraft, industrial, defense, and RF technology markets. So, Leo, many companies underestimate how hard it is to break into a new market. You will need to ask key questions to develop a strong market entry strategy. What makes some high-tech unique? Well, our technology. And basically, we are a technology-driven company um, making very special parts. Um, we call it Hycoflex. This is our uh, flexible PCB uh, boards that you might know and what a PCB board is. Behind me, you see one of those. Uh, in our technology, this is a part of a hearing aid, a very small device. Um, this is parts of what we're doing. Our USB, well, this flexible, bendable, foldable devices enables completely new design possibilities for our customers. It means you can make everything smaller, thinner, lighter. This is something that we need, especially in the medical device industry, but of course, also in, in other ranges. So we have a unique product, which is not only a good thing. It can lead to the situation where you have, uh, for instance, large uh, customers where it's clearly not allowed by any means to have single source suppliers. As I say, this will not work. But as we are more or less the only one worldwide that can do this, there are always ways and means to make some creative solutions to get around this point. We have some very large American companies in our portfolio today. So it works actually. So yeah, with our technology, we supply a lot of different market segments. It's not just the medical devices. You will also find uh, space and aircraft. You will find high precision measuring devices. This is being machine industry, wherever it's used. And then as a new part, we have created a new superconductive variation of our Hikeflex cables. And there we have started entering into a new market of the quantum computing technology. And there we are at the right spot in California. That's excellent. So with your technology, as you just mentioned, you supply different uh, market segments, right? So uh, can you share with us a little bit more about how you approach the US market because of that diversity of segments? Yeah, I mean, the whole thing started many, many years ago where we had, okay, the decision say we want to grow, we want to get outside Europe. Um, getting international. Um, and so we said, okay, we need to find a market that is covering a larger range of our typical customers as we have in Europe. So we have an organization work in Europe. We have knowledge about the market. We have knowledge about our customers and their markets that they are in. And we found this market actually in California. So this was the basic foundation for the decision to go for California as a starting point in the US. Um, from that point, uh, of course, you have to go into the market and find a way to communicate. As we only do really customized products. I mean, there are new, that you will never find a product called high tech, it doesn't exist. So we have this. So we want to go to the market that we have a knowledge of, meaning today we go in, we have a new playground, which is the US market, but all the toys, customers, everything, it's all the same. So we know them all. And this means, okay, it's just one thing to learn. We have to live with a different culture, a different way of being in the market. And of course, you have to be present there. So this was our decision to say we have the right market when we say, okay, let's go for the US market. So you just said um, proximity to your potential customers um, yes. is crucial. 
uh, you figure it out, it was the US market, and you defined your location. Uh, from there, uh, how did you develop your US market? What was the next step? Because we had to look for possibilities to communicate with potential customers. And um, as we are doing customized products only, advertising is not an issue because you cannot do it. Uh, I cannot show the world market what company XY is building with us because um, that's all covered by an NDA. So I need to talk to the people. So for us, it was clear a unique advantage was going with, uh, with the uh, Swiss Pavilion solution, basically MD and M West, which be in the middle of the, of the, the market with a lot of uh, visitors year by year. So that was the base decision to go for that. And then on top of that, being present in the market. And that's what it's all about. You need to be in the market um, because don't mean you will not be able to communicate everything out of Europe because it's still a touch and feel. I mean, if you want to learn something about the customer, you need to be at the customer's side. You need to walk around his production, find out what, what is he doing? How is he doing it? And so this was our approach. And uh, I mean, we have been there now for seven years and it seems to work out. I can tell it's working pretty well. <laughs> so um, your approach is, uh, is a B2B, correct? And yeah. direct to customer, because you, as you're mentioning, you customize your tailor made offers to your customers. Um, you talk about um, supporting your customers with marketing and sales and customer service to bridge with Switzerland. So in a nutshell, which are the most important takeaways from your North American journey that you can share with us? I think the first point and most important point is be sure that this is a clear decision, the management decision from your company. Be sure you know you go for a long run. This is not just, oh, let's try it. And uh, a year later, we say, oh, well, no, it didn't work. So it's, it's OK. It doesn't work like that. It is a long term. It's a long, long term range trip you're starting here. But this is fine. And don't underestimate the US market. It is complex. We all believe that this is easy. Because when we understand the language, it's fine. We've seen a lot of movies. We have been on holiday a lot of times in the US. All friendly people, they always want to talk to you. Nice. But it's still a long way. So this is what you need to do. And you need to be present. Presence in the market. Of course, if you have a hub in the US, it's easy. If you don't have, which you will standardize not have in the beginning. Uh, so it's just a lot of traveling. So, because you always have to be at the customer's side, uh, because that's where the business is happening. It doesn't happen in your in your office, because people do business, not companies. And this is thing what is all about. Uh, so be proactive, be prepared to whatever is going to happen, and yeah, be open for a new market. It is very exciting. I love it. So be consistent. Be out there, build your network, be present, yeah. be proactive, and be prepared. Those are yeah. the, the, the keys um, for success um, market entry in the United States. So thank you so much, um, Leo, for your advice. And uh, I look sure. forward to seeing you in San Francisco very soon and uh, at Same. NDM West next year. Yeah. But definitely in San Francisco before. Okay. <laughs> Perfectly. Thank you so much and have a great um, evening in Switzerland. And, Thank you. Um, bye from Thank San Francisco. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody. So today with us, I have the pleasure to interview Nino Zander, Chief Sales Officer at Beck Automation. Beck Automation is a preferred and highly rated partner in the plastics industry. And as a Swiss technology enterprise, it is one of the top IML or in-mold labeling automation specialist in the world. So Nino, what are the most important verticals of back automation and what makes you unique as a company that you can share with us? 
So, Karin, thank you very much for uh, having me, first of all. <laughs> so, to your You're first welcome. question, we are a, a family-owned company in the third generation. Uh, we are a very accessible company to our customers, and uh, we, uh, we try to build up uh, very personal re relationships uh, to our customers. We are developing and producing customized automation solutions, mm -hmm. which are used in the uh, packaging, plastic packaging industry. Uh, this is uh, mainly focused on food and non-food, but recently we have also stepped into the uh, medical sector mm -hmm. with our uh, automation products. Uh, looking at the uh, North American market, uh, we see it as a very opportunistic and uh, uh, opp opportunistic market with a lot of growth potential. Um, it's a uh, very uh, homogeneous market uh, with a more uniform consumer need uh, compared to uh, to Europe, for example. And this is all, this is why we, we see it as a very important market for us. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you, you started um, 10 years ago, if I'm not wrong. And um, if I may ask, what was uh, one of your challenge, challenges and lessons learned, learned and uh, how did you address it and uh, with your go-to-market strategy, uh, I would say for North America? Right, so uh, at the beginning, we were uh, focusing mainly on, on big brand owners, like mm -hmm. uh, the P&G, Kraft, Unilever's, you all probably know them. And uh, for the first two years, uh, we ran into open doors, but we really never could score any success. Mm -hmm. And uh, after two years um, into this uh, market, putting a lot of effort in it, we realized that is the wrong strategy because the difference uh, from back automation compared to these big brand owners was just huge. We are a little family owned company and there is that a thousand employee big company. And we made a decision to, to switch uh, to more small and mid-sized uh, companies, which are much closer to us and uh, which have a, a similar structure, similar organization. And uh, of course that has not uh, brought uh, instant success, but once we made that decision and focused on smaller companies, that was actually really the starting of uh, of, of our of our success in North yeah, America. Absolutely, you have recently expanded into uh, the American medtech market, right? And so, how do you how do you explain your your strategic shift towards this sector today? Yeah, so um, uh, the first. Um, uh, connection to the uh, medical market was yeah. actually back in 2016 with a German customer. And then it took about four to five years analyzing the market. And we got more and more inquiries from the, uh, from the medical market as well. And we analyzed those inquiries and realized that the technology that we already have uh, building our automation uh, is actually very well suited for the medical needs. Yeah. Of course, they, they, there have to be uh, adaption and changes, but uh, we realized that there is uh, a big correlation. And uh, in 2021, of course, also the COVID situation has helped a lot to, uh, to make that decision and uh, really uh, diversify our portfolio. So it has been a strategic decision back in 2021 to, uh, to enter that medical market. And, but to uh, enter the, that market, that medtech market, uh, it requires some uh, preparation, right? In terms of uh, building the market um, with specific training and know-how. Do, do you mind elaborating a little bit and give us some do's and don'ts or tips? Yes, absolutely. So the, the big differences for us uh, is that uh, uh, on, in the medical side, you have to really comply with a lot of uh, norms and regulations, uh, GMP, for example, or, or FDA. And, and that is very specific knowledge that you have to, to build up within your company to be able to supply your products. And uh, we mainly sourced this knowledge on the open labor market by uh, hiring uh, employees uh, in the yeah. sales department, but also on the technical side. And we are also supported by external companies, experts that are helping us along the way. 
I remember you, you shared with me that uh, what you learn is that if you want to start doing business in the US, you need to understand that a US customer will reach out to you if he doesn't have any other alternative, right? And um, tell us a little bit more about how you, why and how did you address that? Right, so that was something that we realized pretty uh, uh, soon after entering the uh, US market. Uh, a U.S. customer would always go for the local option. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we uh, we learned. Um, so if there's a local option, there's, it's very difficult that for a European supplier to get in because a U.S. customer tends to fear that he is left alone with a, a complex uh, piece of automation, for example, with lack of local service. So it was very crucial for us to, uh, to build up a local service uh, structure and we were lucky to find uh, uh, an, em an uh, employee who uh, recently worked uh, for, for a customer of ours and we, we worked together with him to, to build up that service structure. At the beginning, that was a one-man show, basically. Yeah. Uh, and we also, of course, uh, on the sales side, we, sales side we, had a, uh, we have a sales rep who is uh, working out of Canada. So uh, together with him, we started that uh, journey and uh, we we have quickly added up additional personnel and uh, this this uh, whole strategy has led us to to open our own company now in 2021 which operates out of uh, North Carolina uh, in in the US and is focused on service uh, uh, solutions and sales and uh, there we now have three full-time service technicians uh, who are uh, serving the US market yeah. So it takes time, right? It takes effort to enter a market and a new segment. Um, if you have to share that in, in a nutshell, what, what would you say to, uh, to companies? Yeah, so I would say it's definitely, if you look for an instant uh, success or a, a, an easy way, it's not, that's, that's not what it's going to be. It will take quite some effort for sure. Yeah. In the first few years, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's tough work. Uh, but um, uh, if you look at back automation 10 years ago, we had nothing. Uh, where we are today, we are now supplying uh, more than 10 customers uh, in the US and our total sales in the US has now um, uh, overtaken our European sales last year. And we are a company with, with around 100 employees. So you see going from zero to making more than 50% of, of your sales in 10 years, it's, it's worth it. It's worth, worth to put that effort it's in. A, it's a great achievement. I mean, congratulations. Thank you it's very much. Uh, impressive. <laughs> um, I know it's very short. It's those little clips. So thank you very much, Nino, for your time. And uh, I wish Back Automation the best of luck. And I hope to see you very soon in the United States. Thank you very much, Karin, for having me and uh, have welcome. a great day. You too. Have a nice evening in Switzerland. Let me introduce you to Thomas Good, Chief Sales Marketing Officer from FU Verpa Kungstechnik AG. FU is a leading Swiss industrial company that develops solutions for complex packaging needs in the packaging and medical contract packaging solution segments. Albert Fru founded the company in 1980 to offer discerning customers individual packaging solutions. So Thomas, Fru's strategy has always been customer centric. Could you please tell us how Fru applies this strategy in the North American market? Yes, so Fru started approximately 15 years ago to sell packaging components made in Switzerland, like trays, blisters and pouches in North America. Our sales strategy is based on key accounting. In fact, the sales organization and engineering in Switzerland is as well responsible for the customers in North America. Developing and implementing a business in North America is pretty similar to Switzerland. We need a clear focus. For us, our strategy is a customer key accounting centric approach, meaning 
direct customer support with one sales organization and not through distributors. Which is a very good point. Uh, because we all know, right, that opening um, the North American market uh, needs some preparation. In your point of view, what would be your advice and the key differentiators that allow a company to be successful in the market? At some point to scale up the business, it is important to have your own production in the market you're working for. Of course, the needs, this needs a complete commitment from the ownership and from the management. Before finding the right location, many market research has to be done, like SWOT analysis, pros and cons of all states, customer proximity and supplier security to ensure the entire supply chain. We would like to offer the same service to our customers used as well from the production facility in Switzerland. Our USP is delivery speed. We also want to offer the same service in the USA so that our customer can keep the inventory as low as possible. As well, our customer will get the same high quality level regarding less of the country of manufacture. Our delivery accuracy is independently of the production site. The environmental awareness can be implemented 100% intercontinental transport are not longer needed. In the USA too, our customers receive our service from a single source and last but not least, Qualification and validation level corresponds to the requirements of our international clientees. Oh, this is wonderful. Thank you so much, Thomas, for your time and valuable advice. And um, I hope to see you soon in America again next year, maybe before. But in the meantime, thank you again and uh, good luck to Fu. And I wish you a good day. Thank, Thank you very you. much. You're welcome. Likewise. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hi. Today, I have the pleasure to interview Grégoire Bagnou, Business Development Director at MPS Micro Precision Systems. MPS delivers cutting-edge solutions in micro technology and offers a comprehensive range of services from development and prototyping to the industrialization and manufacturing of systems. So good morning, Grégoire. MPS market, if I'm not wrong, was mainly focused in Europe until 2015. And then your goal was to internationalize MPS outside of Europe. So how and where did you first approach the American market? Um, OK, thank you very much, uh, Karine, to give me the opportunity to, uh, to be with you today. There was, you know, we had a choice between the US and, and Asia, more or less. And we have chosen uh, the US because first, the needs of uh, high tech uh, made of Switzerland, I would say, um, was uh, similar uh, in the US than you have in Europe. So we said, OK, we have a similar industry over there. And uh, second, we have our um, mother company, uh, Fowl Harbor, and they have a subsidiary in uh, Florida. Uh, and we had a feedback from them to say, oh, yeah, that's, uh, that could be an interesting market for, for MPS. And then uh, we have uh, contacted SGE to support because we have no idea how to, to go into that market. Um, and uh, we have been guided by them in the way. First, uh, US is big. Do you want to cover the complete market? Um, and then we, we just focused on, um, on California and uh, New England. Um, and uh, then we decided to go with a rep model. So have you um, adapted or even changed your initial market strategy? The, the idea we had uh, at the beginning was to train the rep to our standard product base, uh, which is uh, quite simple, uh, let's say from an engineering point of view. Uh, and uh, they represent, uh, let's say, only 15% of the sales of MPS, uh, but they are easy to sell. Uh, they don't need a 
a lot of training for we just had the three reps they came uh, for a couple of days uh, to switzerland to be trained and then they could go uh, more or less productive on the market and um, in 2017 we made our first trade show in california it was the west photonics in uh, in san francisco and uh, for us it was um, a big surprise uh, that at the end because we exhibit all our portfolio and the interest of the people coming to our booth was not for the standard components, but it was for the solutions we were selling. Uh, and that was really uh, not uh, what we were expecting. Uh, and then uh, we had to um, then we had to change our strategy. I love to hear that, uh, in fact, your clients uh, were interested by, by something different and uh, that you needed to adapt to the market demand. So how did you address um, that demand? We divided the role between the rep and me. Uh, so the rep, they had the, the task to target some, some accounts that we defined uh, together. So we could that, do that per uh, telephone uh, when I was in Switzerland. And they organized meetings. And then I, I came to, to the US and I made visits with them. Uh, so it means for um, during the six weeks I was in Switzerland, the people in, in the US, they were organizing uh, two weeks of, of sales meeting in the US. Uh, and that was going like that between uh, 2017 until 2019. After, after a while, I noticed this is not the way we should uh, do. So I, we had to adapt the, the, the model. Uh, so uh, the rep model was the wrong one. And so we went uh, away from a rep model to a direct sales model. Uh, and that's where we had to taken the decision to create uh, a company in the US uh, with our own uh, sales and as well application engineering. Um, and uh, we took that decision in 2019. And we have customers already in, uh, in, 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 in the Bay Area, already in California. We had customers in, in the Massachusetts area. And then we decided to go to, uh, we decided to, go to Boston. Um, the advantage of Boston, the big advantage is uh, we have uh, six hours towards Switzerland. So it allows engineers to work a complete afternoon together. So, so we decided to go to Boston in 2019. And uh, now we have, um, uh, since uh, the 1st of May, we have uh, MPS USA Inc. that is established in, in Boston, as in downtown Boston. Uh, and we have uh, one sales engineer and one application engineer working there. Uh, congratulations, that's an incredible story. You saw a, a very good response from, from the market, right? So if you could summarize, what would be the top four recommendations you would give for a good market strategy based on your, your very um, large experience? As a first, I would say, don't think too long of how everything that could be wrong. Just go and uh, test the market. The second, you have to be um, creative, uh, innovative, uh, not in technical terms, uh, because we are from very technical uh, we are engineers, so, uh, but not in technical, no, but you have to, to adapt uh, your model uh, by business model or sales model uh, to the demand. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's very important. A very important point is the commitment to have to spend time in the West. And that's what I, I had to do. Uh, I knew if I would have not done that, I would have let my rep uh, continue on their own, uh, probably we would have stopped the, the exercise now and we say, okay, US is not for us and we keep, we stay in Europe, in Europe which would have been very um, uh, disappointing. Um, and um, yes, and the, yes, the investment of time is very, uh, is very important. And also you have to invest a certain amount of money. So it's not uh, cheap to do that. That so you have to be ready uh, to invest uh, the money. Yeah. Well, in fact, it's not only the physical commitment, it's the human commitment, it's the management commitment. So it's a long journey, right? Yes. Um, so again, thank you very much, Gregor. We are done with our little clip and um, thank you for your time. Congratulations again for the opening of MPS in Boston this spring. I think it's a great achievement. Thank you. And uh, well, I look forward to seeing you in Boston or maybe who knows in San Francisco even though it's quite far away. Yes. Have a nice evening in Switzerland. And uh, again, see you soon. A bientôt. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 
Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to welcome Tony Arquish, who's a North America Sales Manager at Acero, and Dave Lawson, who is the President of Advanced Motion, AMC, which is Acero's distribution partner in Canada. Thank you for having us. Good morning. Tony, could you give us a brief overview of Acero and its products? Sure. Azareal is a Swiss company based out of the French speaking part of Switzerland. So our roots are in the Swiss watchmaking industry and we build flexible feeding systems, which allow uh, in the beginning the watchmaker, for example, instead of the watchmaker taking bulk parts and separating them with the tweezers, that they can uh, then have that process automated so that the watchmaker can concentrate on building watches. Um, so, Tony, you've decided to work with uh, a local partner in Canada instead of opening up your own uh, subsidiary. Where do you see the advantages and where are the challenges? The advantages are quite clear. Uh, opening up an office and hiring uh, highly trained staff is a very expensive in Denver, especially for a small Swiss company like ourselves. So that's why we very quickly decided to go with distribution. And we came across a very established and well-known company in Canada called Advanced Motion Controls. And um, when you were signed um, as a distributor, and that question goes to Dave, was there any uh, preparatory work that you had to do, like training staff, for example? Yes. Um, uh, one, of the, one of the things that uh, you have to do, obviously, is get the, the knowledge into the hands of the salespeople so that they can take the product to the market. Um, any proof of concepts that have to be done. Um, obviously, there is support in North America now that has been established since, uh, since Astral has, has come to North America. We had to be a certain amount uh, um, self-sufficient in doing proof of concepts so that we could provide quick turnaround on the solution to the customer. But uh, for the most part, it's, uh, it, it's sales training, technical training. We have... Um, sent people to various uh, uh, training sessions in, uh, in North America. And also we have sent people also to uh, Switzerland for training as well. And uh, I guess that's also the advantage of, of having a, a distributor. You have somebody on the ground and there's a quick turnaround in case there are issues or, or any, any problems. It's, it's solved rather quickly, which is also an important factor right, I think, in North uh, America, good yeah. customer service. It's like everything. I mean, we have Zoom, we have uh, uh, online connections, but it's still a people business. It's still relationships. It's uh, eye to eye in front of a demo machine, engineers talking to each other, uh, being able to touch the parts, put them in their hands, uh, look at solutions. And it's just imperative to have local people. And there's only so much we can do from Switzerland or Minneapolis. You need boots on the ground and in companies like AMC, that's exactly what they offer. What about approvals for electrical? Um, how is that typically handled? Well, I think from that's an also... industrial standpoint, that's exactly that. I mean, being, uh, trying to function worldwide, of course, to understand every, every country's uh, standards and, and what's needed, uh, that would be a full-time job for two, three people. So uh, this is also another huge advantage of working together with companies like AMC where they understand the local uh, standards and they can assist us and tell us, hey, also really you need to do this and that. Yeah, it's very important for us uh, here in, in Canada to make sure that we adhere to the, the, the electrical standards, the safety standards. Um, we take that very much uh, uh, to heart uh, that we provide products that um, are qualified for the market. So our role here as well as being the distributor of the products is to make sure that um, we give that feedback back to, to the factory, to Astral, uh, or to anybody that we support in the market to ensure that, you know, we, uh, we meet the standards. If we don't, um, you know, can we help bridge the gap to get the field certifications in place and, and things of that nature? So it's a, it's a really important role that, that you don't think about when you're setting up distribution and sales partners in different countries that sometimes there's legwork there that doesn't necessarily come back uh, immediately in returns, uh, but in the end is an important piece of how you introduce and get the products into the market.
Do you have any advice or learnings that you could share with other Swiss SMEs that would like to enter the Canadian market? Um, I think it's important that you understand um, where the products have to go and, and how they're applied. And, and it may not necessarily be the same as it, as it exists in your own country. So, you know, you need to be flexible and you need to be able to, uh, to take the feedback that comes from the customers and comes from the market, comes from the distributor and the partnership and give the, give the market what it was that they wanted. And it just pulled the rest of the product line through. So be flexible, be open, um, listen to the feedback, uh, try and adapt where you can, and uh, it will certainly lead to, to success in, in the venture for sure. Well, thank you so much, uh, Tony and Dave, for your time, for sharing all the, uh, the valuable insights uh, and uh, um, your learnings about uh, the market entry to, to Canada um, and also uh, the advantages of working with a distributor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I have the pleasure to be here with uh, Roland Seckler, who is the Vice President of Global Supply and Chain Operations at Ipsomet, and Todd Derniak, who is the uh, General Manager of Ipsomet in Canada and the U.S. Um, so first question for uh, Roland, maybe you can uh, um, explain a little bit uh, what Ipsomate is doing and what kind of uh, products uh, you offer. Well, thanks for, for inviting us. Um, Ipsomate is um, a global developer and uh, manufacturer uh, of uh, medical devices, especially for um, diabetes patients. This is all, uh, uh, our core um, product portfolio, which we are selling uh, globally. Um, in 2018, Ipsomit decided to enter the uh, Canadian market. Uh, could you elaborate on why you decided to enter Canada first and to enter the U.S. next? Hi, Sonia, and, and thanks, Roland. Uh, you know, I, I think just like any market entry, you've got to look at the four Ps, product, price, place, and promotion. You also have to look at payment and reimbursement as well and market access. So um, the Canadian market offered us, uh, from a regulatory standpoint, a, a quicker entry into the marketplace for our product. So that would be our foothold in Canada while we worked on the U.S. plan. So uh, it, it really was uh, a, a less, provided less friction for us to enter Canada first. Uh, from a regulatory standpoint, so we had access to the market. Because as a medical device manufacturer, if you don't have clearance through the regulatory body, which is Health Canada, then you mm -hmm. can't even start. So that's the starting point. And, and looking at that as a friction point and seeing how fast can we move there versus the U.S. allowed us to, to prioritize the Canadian launch ahead of what we're doing. In and how did uh, Ipsomate prepare for its market entry in, in Canada? We identified a third party logistics provider, which meant we didn't have to build our own warehouse and we didn't have to have all of that uh, overhead in the beginning as we ramped up commercially. And then we focused on Health Canada clearance so that we can get a license to sell our product and then building a sales team in strategic markets across Canada because the Canada healthcare market is provincial. So you need provincial reimbursement, not national reimbursement that you can get in other countries. So Roland, you mentioned that having a stable or mature product portfolio certainly helps. That's one of the success factors of doing business here. Um, are there any other important success factors um, in, in North America? I think Todd just mentioned a, a very important word. It, it's trust. Huh? You, you have to build trust uh, to the notified body, to the other authorities, uh, as well to the patients. And this is, uh, let's say, it makes really um, a big difference to competition. If your service level is high, if you have a um, stable portfolio, a very high educated uh, team uh, in the back office, if, if a, a, a patient or customer is dialing in and having some problems, um, all those, uh, let's say, Swiss made uh, um, elements like a high quality product, uh, uh, a very nice design, a very high service level is, is more or less one of the most uh, important key successful. 
Now, also going back to uh, what um, you also mentioned before about uh, Health Canada. Um, so how does the process work? How long does it take? Uh, and were there any challenges like when you, um, before you received uh, that market authorization for your products? Well, no matter where, where you go uh, with the regulatory clearance there, and, and whatever notified body or whatever you're doing around the world, there's always questions and the timeline is never set. But, you know, we, we look at, uh, you know, three to four months for a device like ours, but there can be questions and other things that come along uh, the way. So uh, we have to be prepared to be uh, very uh, thoughtful in our uh, in our approach to the regulatory bodies and and be very quick to answer the questions uh, quickly and succinctly. And uh, we build a relationship over time. When you're new in the marketplace, the regulatory bodies don't know you, and so you've got to do a little bit more work, that heavy lifting up front to build a relationship of trust. And then when you show that you demonstrate your data is good and your product has a quality level, that's uh, substantial, then the next uh, license should be um, better and easier to, uh, to put through. So we're in the process of continuing to build that relationship from starting from basically no brand awareness and zero in Canada. Now we, uh, now we work you know, directly with the agency uh, as we look to bring new innovations to the marketplace. And I believe you also have like a, a very like a, a dedicated team uh, who does just that uh, all, all around the world, right? It was just dealing with uh, regulatory uh, uh, issues yeah. or assessing. We have a regulatory team that's based, uh, of course, in, in Switzerland at the headquarters, but we also have a North American expert that serves both the U.S. and Canadian markets that's local in our, in our time zone that is part and parcel of the team in Switzerland, but also has mm -hmm local on the ground expertise to build that relationship and respond. So, so having those uh, regulatory experts on your team, whether they're consultants or direct hire, we started with a consultant and then as the business is growing, we, we went and made a direct hire. So that's an important consideration for, uh, for businesses as they enter markets outside of the CD market uh, regulations. Mm -hmm. Right. But my next question, what would be your advice to other Swiss SMEs that want to enter the Canadian market? I think the challenge is just um, building, building that trust, as we talked about earlier. And, and trust is, is not just the reputation of Swiss products, but it's also then the logistics and, and the, the quality of the team that we're hiring on the ground here. Um, that all adds into you know, creating a great customer experience. So, um, and, and then also understanding the, the local cultures and, and Canada's multicultural uh, in, in a way, because as you know, Quebec is different from uh, the, the rest of Canada and New Brunswick is, is different from, you know, that. so even though the provinces are part of a nation, they all have their own character. And, and so, uh, you know, understanding what it takes to succeed in, in, in each province is, is the next level of detail. Well, thank you so much, um, Todd and uh, Wuland, for your time and for all the interesting insights that you provided into Ipsomit's journey, exporting journey into Canada and um, soon also into the US. Um, it was a pleasure to speak with you. And if any other SMEs have any questions, they can directly reach out to you. In our short interview today, we want to cover the regulatory journey for Swiss SMEs that are exporting to both the US and Canada. So, hey, Tamara, great to speak to you. Can you please give us a brief intro about uh, yourself and about Mediday and your particular area of uh, expertise? Sure, absolutely. Thank you for having me here today and uh, letting Mediday uh, introduce ourselves. Uh, so I am Tamara Lewis. Uh, I have been in the medical device industry here in the United States for over 18 years. Uh, I specialize in everything related to the FDA, uh, including pre-market submissions, uh, pre-sub requests, Q-sub requests, 510K submissions, 
uh, remediation efforts, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, anything related to the FDA, uh, I can, can assist with. Um, as far as Metaday, we were founded over 20 years ago. We offer consulting services uh, in regulatory quality and uh, we're a full CRO organization. Uh, we offer everything from device development uh, to, again, the full CRO support. Uh, so we are, we are here to help with submissions. We're here to help with remediation. Uh, anything uh, related to regulatory, we can assist with. That sounds great. Thank you very much. And thanks again for, uh, for, uh, for, for uh, talking to us today. So uh, let's dive into the topic now of really the regulatory landscape for uh, medtech companies in the North American market. So if we take a Swiss exporters point of view, because those are the, those are the companies that we are uh, in, in, uh, in contact with, why would a medtech company actually chose to go to the US or Canada in the first place when you know, a European market is maybe so close? Sure, sure. Uh, so over the past few years, the mutual recognition agreements that were in place in the EU uh, that allowed people to operate cross borders, uh, they really have broken. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty now with, you know, if you're in Switzerland, uh, does that agreement cover you for EU? Not really. Sometimes there are separate agreements um, and it's just it's getting quite complex and difficult. Uh, there are the products are easy to bring to the U.S. Um, from a regulatory perspective in most cases, uh, unless you're developing something quite novel. Uh, the U.S. has very clear pathways. Uh, you can access the FDA pretty much on demand. Uh, you, there, there are programs they have. Um, that you can interact with them directly. Uh, we, there are databases available with hosts of information uh, that tell you what sort of regulations apply to your devices, what classification your device will be. Um, you, it, it's just quite clear, I guess, is my, my point in all of that. Mm -hmm. um, the direct, the regulatory pathway for uh, class two devices is quite direct. You find a matching 510k, uh, sorry, a matching predicate device, and you file a 510k to say my device is the same as this. Um, once you're in the US market, then uh, it is quite large, and you are free to move about uh, all 50 states and uh, have have free reign to market your device here in the United States. So in a way, it's been it's being made easy for 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 companies to come in. Right, right. There's no uh, guesswork. Everything is is available in a repository at the FDA. It doesn't mean uh, you don't have to go find it, but it is available. Mm -hmm. And does the same count also for for uh, Health Canada in terms of uh, regulatory pathway? Uh, in most cases, yes. Uh, Health Canada is a participant in MDSAP as well as the U.S., so uh, you do have some benefits there once you uh, get your MDSAP certification, which is uh, basically your notified body saying you are good for these five different countries. It's U.S., Canada, Australia, uh, Brazil, and Japan. Um, you have a little bit easier access to get into uh, Health Canada then because you have that MD cert MDSAP certification. Um, it is something they're requiring. Uh, in the past, it was more just you, you do a registration with them uh, and work with Health Canada to get your product there. Um, but now you do need to have that MDSAP certification. Uh, so that I would say is the, the big difference there. Okay, thank you very much. So now when we're looking uh, at the actual details, what's the process now for accessing the US market from a regulatory point of view for a Swiss SME? In other words, what's the regulatory homework that they have to do? Sure. So um, there is definitely some homework involved. Uh, the first thing is always determine the classification of your device. Uh, if you have a class one device and it's exempt, it's pretty straightforward. You obtain a registration, uh, you do your device listing, and you have your quality system in place with some general controls, and you go to market. 
Uh, if it's a class two device, you have to hopefully find your predicate uh, out there and you go through the 510K process. Um, but uh, class three devices are a little bit uh, more complex and difficult in that um, you're not proving equivalence. You are always going to prove that your device um, through data and uh, testing is safe and effective um, for the market. So class three, a little bit more uh, difficult. Um, you do need to have a US agent uh, in place. Metaday does offer that service. Um, and that's basically if for some reason the company is, is you know, unavailable, not able to be contacted, the FDA wants to know who they can contact to make sure the company uh, is available for them to speak if necessary. Uh, so again, Metaday offers that service. Um, I did just uh, say you, you need your establishment registration. That's for class one, two, or three. Um, but class one is pretty much the only thing you have to do is get that establishment registration and device listing. You have to set up a quality system uh, as per the quality system regulation in the United States. Uh, and it really, you know, a, a, an ISO 13485 um, quality system is acceptable. The U.S. is working to uh, marry, marry the two, really, um, the quality system regulation and the ISO 13485 to make basically a harmonized um, international standard so everybody doesn't have to have uh, two separate quality systems. We're not there yet, uh, but we're working towards it. So um, finally, you would need to contact uh, Metaday, right? We, we can help you work through all of these complex um, landscapes and we can uh, give you a nice roadmap uh, that you're not having to, to try to figure out uh, how to, to make all of these things come together. Um, we've, we've been doing this for quite some time. Mm -hmm. No, that sounds, that sounds great. And can you maybe just real quick dive into the actual steps that companies have to take for the Canadian market? So to, to obtain sure. that authorization by Health Canada? Sure, sure. Um, so tip again, determine your device classification. If you're already in EU, it's most of the time the same device classification. Uh, you do need to, again, as we spoke about, obtain that MD SAP certification. Uh, it is quite an expensive effort uh, to connect with a notified body, uh, conduct your surveillance audits, get your certification. Um, really, it's only worth this sort of effort if you want to go into those five countries that I spoke about earlier, US, Brazil, Australia, Japan, and Canada. Uh, then it makes a lot of sense to, to um, invest in that effort up front. You do need to have a good relationship with uh, Health Canada. That's extremely helpful. It doesn't mean if you don't, uh, you're not going to get in, but uh, they are uh, very big on relationships and, and you will get you know, better service uh, if you do have a connection over there. And again, um, Metaday is here to, to provide support. Um, we do have Health Canada relationships and connections and we can certainly assist in that area. Perfect, thank you so much. As a final question, now that we've discussed a regulatory pathway, what are some of the additional challenges that you see that a Swiss SME needs to be aware of when, uh, when focusing on these two markets? Sure. Uh, while our regulatory pathway is quite, uh, you know, pathed out for you, uh, it's not so easy to organize a sales network in the United States and Canada. Um, our reimbursement uh, landscape is quite complex here in the U.S., uh, and you absolutely need local partners to be able to uh, navigate through um, working in the U.S. You, you can't have just your company set up uh, abroad and, and expect to operate here. You have to have some local uh, relationships as well. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you so much, Tamara. These were super valuable insight and your contact details, of course, are going to be made uh, available and companies can also reach out directly to us and we will put them in touch with you. So thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much.
Thank you very much for your attention and for having joined us on these MedTech Pathways to Success in North America. We're sure that you've gained a lot of inspiration and insights for your own export endeavors. If you want to know more, there is a lot of additional reading and video material available on the MedTech Industry Vertical on our SG homepage covering markets worldwide. Please also refer to our latest MedTech report about the Canadian market, digital health and health tech in Canada, which will be a great read, especially after hearing from Ipsomid and Cyril today. Finally, we will be delighted to hear from you with any questions or interests that you may have uh, in either market. Please reach out directly to Corinne Whitmer in San Francisco, to Sonia Müller in Montreal, or to me here in Zurich. We're looking forward to accompanying you on your pathway to success in the US and Canadian medtech markets. Are you looking to start or expand your international business? Then with us, you're in the right place. We support your internationalization process from start to finish, based on your specific needs. With our Go Global cockpit, you can analyze and discover markets and receive information on customs tariffs in over 150 countries. And our country experts are ready to discuss your next export project without commitment. 